Hello, my name is Eliseo Rodriguez, and this is Arianism Today. Today, we're going to be talking about what is faith. So, to answer what is faith, <clears throat> faith is complete confidence, trust, and belief in the living God. That's what faith is. Now, faith is, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, faith is the substance of things that you're believing for. When it says hoped for, you're believing for these things. But it's the evidence of things that are not seen. Um, so, when God gives you faith to, let's say, that you're going to get a house. Or you have a promise, like Abraham had a promise about you know, a land, you know, with milk and honey, you know, where he could dwell. <clears throat> That's a promise that he was given and he acted on that promise. He believed that promise no matter what. And so it's the evidence that there is something that God is giving me and I have faith for it. And the faith that I have for it is the evidence of it itself, um, that it is in existence and it's coming to me. Um, so that's what faith is. Now, so that's the way the Bible describes it. So let's look at John chapter 3, verse 27. John chapter 3, verse 27. So it says, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. We cannot receive anything that is not given to us from heaven. And so with that in mind, faith we receive from heaven. If this verse says that everything, that a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven, which is obviously the Father, God's will, then we receive faith from God. That's what we understand now. Um, so Romans, let's look at Romans chapter 10 verse 17 Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God so faith cometh by hearing hearing what hearing the word of God hearing God speaking to you hearing what the Bible says is going to give you faith if you never heard about Jesus if you never heard the story of that was in the Bible about Jesus coming and dying for our sins, you wouldn't have any reason to have faith to believe that God has forgiven you of your sins. So when you heard the word of truth, you gained faith to believe for this that, that this is true. And so that's the same with everything in the Bible. You have to know what the word of God says. You have to know what God said. You have to know what God has promised you to have faith to believe for those things. If you don't know God wants you to be healed, you're not going to have faith to believe for healing. If you do not believe that God wants you to have uh, peace and, uh, you know, riches uh, and, and, and uh, um, blessings, and that's not monetary I'm talking about, I'm talking about spiritual things, um, a wife or children or these things. If you don't know that God wants to give you those things and where the scripture says that, that you can hold on to, there's nothing to put your faith into. You have to know what God is promising you to be able to get it. So um, reading the word develops faith within you, hearing the truth. So faith comes from God and faith comes from hearing the word of God. Um, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We, because of Jesus, have faith to believe that God is going to give us our promises, that God's going to give us what we need. So, through Jesus, we're gaining faith from the Father. So, <clears throat> so now we know where faith comes from. Faith comes from God, from, from 
reading the word of God, spending time in the word of God and from through Jesus. So let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans 12, 3. Romans 12, 3 says, For I say, though the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. According to this scripture, Romans 12, 3, every man has a measure of faith already given to you. So everyone has the ability to, to exercise faith so don't feel like don't believe the lie that you don't have faith that you've never possessed faith that you have no ability to believe for xyz god has given everyone a measure of faith so let's look at matthew chapter 17 verse 20 matthew 17 verse 20 and Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And so Jesus is saying, It's not the size of your faith. It's not whether you have a giant piece of faith, or it's not... A mustard seed, it's saying, he's saying, just having faith, period, is any kind of faith, any amount of faith is good enough to move mountains. So don't feel like, well, I just got a little bit of faith. I don't have enough to believe. No, that's not right. It's any kind of faith that you have is good enough to believe for God to move for miracles for what God has promised you. So Jesus is saying, in this verse, that it is not whether you feel like you have a lot of faith or not, it is just having faith, even if it's the tiniest amount, is enough to move mountains. So, you've given faith, the Bible says God has given you a measure of faith, and that measure of faith is good enough to move mountains. This is what the Word of God is saying. So, how does, so how, how are we supposed to walk as Christians? What's what's the um, knowing that, you know, faith is is real, that what faith is and um, and moving forward. How are we supposed to live? Roman second uh, Corinthians chapter five, verse seven says, for we walk by faith and not by sight, not by what we see. I don't care what the circumstances are telling you. I don't care if someone says you're going to uh, uh you know, that, that you're not going to make it, that you're going to fail as a Christian, that you're not going to become saved, that you're never going to, that it's all a lie, whatever. Um, and that, not just in salvation, but, you know, anything. Whatever the circumstances are in your life, the world crumbling down around you, and it looks like it's the end of the world, it's the end of your existence here on earth, and you just feel like you're just being crushed by the weight of everything. Look to God and have faith that God is going to pull you through and that God's going to have a solution for you. So walk by faith. You're going to be happy even though all of these things are going on. You're going to have a positive mindset knowing that God has a plan for me. I don't care what it looks like. I know God has a plan for me. I'm not going to allow these things to shake my faith. Now, um, the analogy that I want to give you for this is Paul. I'm sorry, Peter. When Jesus said, come, Peter, you know, come to me. And he walked off of the boat and started to walk towards uh, towards Jesus. He had his eyes on what God had told him through Jesus. Um, uh, that he knew that if Jesus was asking me to come out to the water, to walk on the water, I have the ability to walk on water. Jesus is not going to have me make a fail blog right here. In front of all of my all the rest of the apostles, he's saying, if Jesus is telling me to do this, and I'm not saying that Jesus is God. Obviously, we know that they are different persons, but if Jesus is telling him to get out, he's having faith to believe that he can do that. Now, that's walking by faith. Walking by sight 
is when you start, it says he starts seeing the turbulence of the water, you know, it's the, the wind, and he's kind of like looking at the elements and saying, I shouldn't even be up here. What's going on? And starting to doubt, and he starts to sink. He's walking by sight then. So you can see he was walking by faith, and then he was walking by sight. Now, that's not a big issue that he failed that test um, because it's not easy. Don't feel horrible when you fail a test, when you fail to live by faith, you know, and be a super strong, solid person. You've got to grow. You've got to develop that. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do that by reading. You're going to be doing that by talking and having spending time with God. You're going to uh, believe that God has given you a measure of faith and only, only, only believe and, and fight off doubt. That's how you're going to get better. But it's it's a learning process. Even Peter had to learn this process. At the very end, obviously, Peter, just if they had the shadow of Peter upon them, the, these people would be saved. They just lay them on the, his path so that they could be saved. That's a, a lot of faith there. there a lot of God's presence upon Peter. So it's it, he's developing. All of us are. So understand that faith is a new concept to some people. Let's believe God for things. I'm not saying... Uh, um, it's got to be obviously according to God's will um, and all of that stuff. But as long as it's in the word and you have faith for it, and God has spoken to you, then, then let's, let's hold on to those promises and not, not lose them. Um, so we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, something very important. Um, let me see here. Hebrews 11.6 says, For uh, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must believe that God is, to begin with, that God exists. Right? You must believe that God is real. You must believe that God is real. He's alive he really means this book that you're reading he's he's actually more real than we are we have must believe that first and that this word is not just words but it's truth and that if we hold on to these truths and believe god for them that it's going to happen so without faith it's impossible to please, please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him Pray, seek and seek and pray and seek and look to God to give you what you're praying for. So you say, you know, if you pray anything in the name of Jesus, you shall have it. Believe that and move on that and trust God to give you what you're praying for in the name of Jesus. If it's according to God's will, that is what we must do uh, as Christians is walk by faith, not by sight and diligently seek God, seek, pray, pray. Pray, pray, repeat prayers and repeat prayers and repeat prayers. I'm not saying repeat them over and over again, but I'm saying remind God of what you're believing him for. Remind God the scripture that you're holding on to for that. Remind God and, and ask him and talk to him and believe for those things and, and stand firm. That's what God wants. And it's pleasing to him when he knows that you're actually believing the word he said. So it pleased God when he told Abraham to kill his son and Abraham was going to kill him and he could see in Abraham's heart that Abraham knew that God had told him that through Isaac he was going to fulfill the promises. And so he knew that if he was told by God to kill Isaac that God was going to resurrect him. That was the thought that Abraham had. He said, okay, God said, first of all, God promised me that, you know, all of the promises are going to come through Isaac, through my son. And so he's going to live. He's going to grow. He's going to have children. He's going to, you know, all of that. And then later on, okay, well, God's telling me that I need to kill him now. And in your own thoughts, right, in your own way of looking at things, if, if Abraham wasn't a man of faith, he would say, well, um, this is not the way it's supposed to be because if I kill him, then all the promises are gone. 
uh, that's fleshly carnal thinking. He's saying, oh no, if God told me to do this, then I'm going to do it. And when he was going to kill him, he believed that Isaac was going to be resurrected after he killed him. That it was just kill him and then he'll come back to life. He believed that. And that has a lot of analogies towards Jesus that we can't speak of right now because it's off topic. But it's an amazing thing. Walk by faith and not by sight. Um, so God expects us to walk by faith, not by sight. God is pleased when we walk by faith. We need to believe that he is and that he is going to answer us when we diligently seek him. So um, that's the end of the uh, uh, conversation on faith. Next topic will be um, prayer and maybe prayer and fasting together. So um, we'll talk about that next time. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and share the videos. Um, don't forget to visit us at um, on Facebook at Arianism Today. The, it's a group on Facebook. Um, and to the website ArianismToday.com. Uh, friend me on Facebook, uh, on Google+, on Twitter, which is at Arianism Today. And let's spread this truth. Um, God is going to bless all of this. Um, so uh, so just believe uh, that God is going to spread the gospel through us and help us by uh, sharing and liking um, and all of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.